Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. I have a stunning, stunning revelation uh, that the Heavenly Father gave me today regarding Daniel chapter 7 and that, that oh gosh, that beast that is going to think to change the times and the law. Believe it or not, it is not so hard to trace when you know the truth of what's really going on. And of course, in this video here, we're going to come back to it in just a moment. Netanyahu just confirmed third temple rebuilding will start early 2024. And I don't think it's going to happen early 2024, but it may actually begin in 2024. And this has a lot to do with that very scripture that we're talking about over in Daniel. But before I go to that, I want to take you back here to the resolution that the House just passed uh, recently. This here showing some of the uh, the, the different uh, congressmen speaking about the bill, giving their two cents in, things like that. And of course, on RT, uh, they, they, of course, it's everywhere, you know, approved by 320 votes uh, to 91, 91 uh, were against it. Uh, so many abstained from it, but, uh, you know, overwhelmingly it passed in the House, more than likely it's going to pass in the Senate as well. It no doubt will end up getting passed into law. And, uh, and I want to take and show you, though, what the seriousness of that being passed into law will be. Where is it here? Let's see. Um, yes, right here. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> no, I think it's actually over here in this article here. Nope, 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 nope. Give me a second. I'll find it here. Oh, gosh, where did I see it at? Come on, Steve. Find that article there. This is that. It would suggest. It was, nope, 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 nope. Where is it at? The bill would require the U.S. Department. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's right here in the purple. Okay, approved by 320 votes to 91 on Wednesday with 21 Republicans and 70 Democrats opposing, the bill would require the U.S. Department of Education to adopt a broad definition of anti-Semitism. Remember the resolution signed by every president every year on the Noahide Laws? Honoring... Menachem Schneerson, the founder of the Chabad Lubavitch group there, honoring his birthday, calling it Education Day. Because the seven Noahide laws are going to be incumbent upon all Gentiles of the earth sooner or later, and they adopt it first in education. You cannot help if you have never followed my wife's work, Yana Benun. And all the work she's done, go to our, 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 our uh, website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. There is a slew of videos, some of them removed by YouTube, of course, but a slew of videos that are still there where you can see that information about the Noahide Laws, how sinister it is, how they're bringing it in, uh, and it is just alarming. Uh, Stephen, and Yana, Stephen and Yana chat is where you'll find that at and under Noahide Laws on our website there. Now... Again, though, like I said, that's what the resolution that just passed did. And, of course, RT, I thought it was interesting how RT put it. Jesus didn't kill Jesus, U.S. House of Representatives. Lawmakers have broadened the definition of anti-Semitism in the latest legislation. And this is what RT brings out. The U.S. House of Representatives have passed a bill which its authors claim is aimed at combating anti-Semitism in American universities. If signed into law, it would mean suggesting that Jesus Christ was killed by Jews could be classified as anti-Semitism. Well, you know, listen, I don't even say that the Jewish people killed Jesus. You know, let's face it, that was 2,000 years ago. But oddly enough, though, Jesus, when he indicted the Pharisees, put the blood of Abel all the way back to the Garden of Eden on the Pharisaic dynasty. You see, it's not Jewish. It's not a matter about Jewish. It is a matter about a bloodline of an evil group that is in there that is not even Jewish to begin with. That's why Revelation chapter 2 says they say they are Jews and they are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. Believe me, the time's going to come. They're going to want to rewrite the Bible. You know, remember the, uh, the debate we had uh, with Michael Brown? And because he had brought that issue up, he was not opposed to it, but he's kind of backtracked on that. You know, and I mean, I believe Michael Brown is, is a believer. I believe he loves the Lord, and I appreciate Michael Brown. I appreciate his willingness to debate. 
and, and to do it in a, in a friendly manner. But we just disagree. Now, let's get right to the nitty gritty, though. I've got to share with you this amazing revelation that God placed on my heart. First, I want to play this little clip from Rapture Discovery. Uh, what they put out here from Netanyahu, or what they said here. Let me just play about, oh, about 15 seconds. So kind of listen in on this. Alert. Netanyahu just dropped a bombshell. The third temple rebuilding kicks off this November. Imagine the historic echoes and what this means for the world. Is it a game changer or a controversy starter? What's the scoop on the city of David and what about the Dome of the Rock? So let's dive into this video. All right, then. I'll try to remember to put the link for his video there. I've not actually watched the video, so I don't know what he goes all into there. But it's very important what he's talking about on the third temple. Because like I said, it is a bombshell revelation about Daniel chapter 7. Now I'm going to go right to the heart, verse 25, Daniel 7, 25. This is where Daniel has the vision. And he sees these four beasts that rise up. But you remember the fourth one, he can't even describe it. So evil and so wicked of a beast. And I do believe the reason why is because like in the seven seals, the fourth rider is death riding on that, that horse there. I proved to you scripturally that fourth horse rider is Israel. The, not the Jewish people, but the modern state that is being ran by an evil cabal in the background. But they're not the horse rider. It's death is the horse rider. And hell follows with him. The only thing is they're blinded. They've been blinded and don't recognize who's leading them. No wonder why Jesus says, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. You see, the hand, the mercy of God is outstretched still. Wait till you see this, though. Now, everybody's familiar with this. And a lot of people say, oh, it's got to be the Pope. He wants to change uh, the Sabbath to Sunday. That was changing the law. I can prove to you it's totally wrong. I can prove to you any kind of theory like that is totally wrong. And I didn't know it either. I have to confess, I didn't know it. And I've never really kind of, I kind of touched on it here and there. But now I know what the answer is. Listen into this. And he shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints or the holy ones. It's actually the holy ones of the Most High. And he shall think to change the seasons or the times, zaman, it's from the word right there in blue down here. These three little letters right here means time. Zamanin, which is the times plural. It is an ancient way of pluralization of Hebrew. It was used, the nun sofit instead of the mem sofit was used for pluralization. It will change the, think, think to change the times and the law. But, it's not what you think of the word as law. It is dot. Dalit tav. There's only three places in the entire Bible that I am aware of, or three books where the word dot is used, or dalit tav aleph, dot ta, that is used. It's Ezra, it is Esther, and the book of Daniel. Any other time when you think of the word law, it's going to be more like that of the book of Exodus, right? Torah. Torah is the law of God. It's the law of the Heavenly Father, right? Like you see here in Exodus, oh gosh, I don't even know what chapter we're in here. Let's see, Exodus chapter 16. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will cause to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather day portion every day, that I might prove them whether they will walk in my Torah. And he, in this case here, the actual uh, uh, compound verbiage of that is betoti. Betoti. Which is in the letter bet, right here at the beginning. Bet is, uh, is for in. Torah is for the law itself. The next three letter is Torah. Normally you would add a hey, but in this case here, because it's going into my law, it is going to have the, the hey is dropped and the tav is added in the yod which is a pluralization. 
So it is, in, or, or excuse me, not a pluralization, but a personal pronoun. God saying, my law. And so all the way through the Old Testament, it is normally always the word Torah. The Torah is the law. That is what God's law is. So then, Brother Steve, what is this then over here in Daniel then? If he's thinking to change the times and the law, and it says law, what is the word dot? The word dot is a decree. Generally, as a general rule, it's what a king would decree. It could even be something God decrees, but it would be a decree that would be issued by a king or backed up by a king. All right, let's first establish that a little bit. Let me take you real quick over to Esther, for example. Esther uses the Dalit Tav, okay? But in the book of uh, Ezra, he uses Dalit Tav Aleph. If you're looking it up in the, in, uh, the uh, concordance, it would be H1881 and H1882. The difference in the two numbers would be whether or not it has the Aleph in there or if it does not have the Aleph. If it is compounded sometimes, though, the Aleph is intended, but it's not actually used. In the case of Esther, though, we find right here, Then the king said to the wise men who knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. Okay, what shall, go down to verse 15. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law? Okay, what law? It wasn't the Torah. It was whatever the king's law was of that particular kingdom under Esther. And it says right here, Kadat. Okay, the, 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 uh, the chet right there. Uh, you can, there's many ways it could be translated. It could be according, it could be as or therefore. A lot of different ways you could translate that. The root of the word dot would be the law or that king's decree. What do we do according to what the king has decreed? Because he would not come out to be seen with, the, with, his, uh, with her husband. She disobeyed. It's a decree. In the case of Ezra, Ezra being the scribe, he's actually a scribe of uh, uh, Artaxerxes in the time of Daniel. What does it say right here? I'll give you an example. Many times in the book of Ezra. And whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed upon him with all diligence. Now in this case here, it says the law of God. Okay. And here it is right here. Uh, he will oved, which means to do. Oved data. Data di elo Whoever will not do the law of your God, so to speak, Vedata Dai Melech Melech, and will not do the law of the king. Now, in this case, the reason it doesn't say Torah, because the law of God, they're referring to the law of God as a decree that the second temple is going to be built. So it's almost like looking at it as a prophetic word. So therefore, it's still a decree, a decree of the king. But they translated it in English as a law rather than a decree. Now, in some places, it does translate it as a decree, as far as I'm aware of. I'm not sure, but I think so, right? So in the case of Daniel, what do we have here about this, uh, this, this particular verse in verse 25? Well, let's back up and see what's going on first, all right? These great beasts, which are four are four kings that shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I desire to know the truth concerning the fourth beast, just like that fourth rider, which was diverse from all of them, exceedingly terrible, whose teeth were of iron and its nails of brass which devour and break in pieces and stamp the residue with his feet. Remember, that's very much similar to, to uh, Nebuchadnezzar's vision as well, because the legs and the feet were partly of iron and of clay. So I'm going to go into prayer about that. I've had my opinion on that. I'm going to go into prayer about that one now. And concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up before which the uh, three fell, even that horn that had eyes 
and a mouth that spoke great things, whose appearance was greater than that of its fellows. That's because it's Satan riding that horse. Just like in the case of the horse riders, I mean. And I beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. That's why, that's why I brought up this resolution. You see, the Jewish people are being used to carry out Satan's will. Because he knows that they're still blind until God opens their eyes or as he opens them individually, whichever the case may be, right? Until the ancient days came and judgment was given for the saints for the Most High and the time came and the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom upon the earth. So it's not just the fourth beast, but it is a kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. Most people think, this shall not devour, devour the whole earth, Brother Steve. Yes, they have. Do I need to show you? Let, let, let's just do this real quick. You know, uh, uh, you got to see it, right? All right, let's go like this. Putin. Chabad. All right? Let's just get some, let's get some images here real quick. There we go. There you go. Putin. Chabad. Menachem Schneerson in the background, chief rabbi of, of that there, right? Zelensky. The very man he's warring against, right? Zelensky. Chabad. There you go. Right? Uh, let's get another one in here. All right? Biden. Chabad. Okay? There you go. There you go. Everywhere you go. Right? All right? Trump. Everybody loves Trump. Or at least the people that love Trump love Trump. Trump in Jerusalem at the Wailing Wall. Don't fault him for that right there. But right here you have him here signing that Noahide law right in that resolution every year faithfully right there. You know, that's his weakness. They're all on, friends. Okay? Doesn't matter who you got. You want to put Hillary? Let's put Hillary. Let's put her in there. Well, there, there you go with uh, Obama, by the way. There you go. Right? Let's see. That's what we get here. Of course, uh, you know, goodness oh gosh here well i can't do that because somebody superimposed that flag on there for here we go you know by the way nothing else is chabad as well you know uh let's see here oh wow well, we don't see as many but you know the thing is we know we know where it is we know that by the way trump's daughter you know jared kushner all the rest uh it doesn't matter where you go let's 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 try she jen Ping, I don't know if I spelt his name properly. Uh, Xi Jinping, let's see. Uh, the, the key in this is to get the name spelt right, and I think I spelt it wrong there. Let's see, who do we have in here? I don't know. You know, you, you can, though, just go anywhere you want, anything in the world, and you are going to have Chabad in the background. Let me, let me try it. Let me just try Israel for him. But maybe he's trying to keep the face of communism alive, so he's kind of being careful. There we go there. You got him here with Netanyahu. There's your Chabad auto, automatically uh, to go with him there. I, w I wonder if he ever went to the wall. Don't know. Let's see. I spelled Israel wrong too. Gosh, can't believe, can you believe that? My goodness, Israel. That was, that that probably she. Yeah, that's that's the problem. I spelled his name wrong. She. Jinping. It always helps to be able to spell a name correctly if you're going to do this. Um, let me just put on there. Okay. Wall. Jerusalem. See if we got Xi Jinping there, and let's let's put everything correctly now. Well, it looks like he ain't been to the wall. What do you know? Probably the one leader everybody hates, and it doesn't look like. But we know he's bought off because I've already I've already heard too much about it. So, and uh, I'm gonna try one last time with the Chabad though, because like I said, you don't normally have a leader anywhere in the world is not. 
owned by this organization. Because I know I've been told, do not speak against China. Oh, what do you know there? There you go. There you go, Mr. Kissinger. That's Chabad in itself. He by himself represents Chabad. So, as well as Netanyahu, all the different Jewish leaders of the world, you know, and let me just, let me try, maybe if I did it as rabbis, maybe that might help. Uh, he's there with Kirill, the Orthodox uh, minister there. You know. Well, I will give him credit, though. Man, ain't had a picture that I can find thus far with Chabad. I'll have to keep looking on that one. All right, anyway, I don't want to waste time, though. I really don't. Let's go back, though, to that scripture, Daniel chapter 7. So, thus he said, The fourth beast shall be fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread down and break it in pieces. And as for the ten horns out of this kingdom shall ten kings arise, another shall arise after them. He shall be diverse from the former. He shall put down three kings, and he shall speak words against the Most High. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, the holy ones. Now you say, well, you know, Israel, you know, Netanyahu, they, they love Yahweh. Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. Talking about the Pharisees now, 2,000 years ago. But remember, Nehemiah Gordon says to us, you can't be a Chabad rabbi without being descendant of the Pharisees. And he shall think to change the season or the time. What is that? You see, the decree... And the law, the law or the decree was Artaxerxes, Darius, and, uh, uh, and Cyrus, they were the three Persian kings that gave the decree to go build this, to restore the temple in Jerusalem. That was the decree. And it was what? During their time period, at that time. Why? Because God knew that the coming of the Mashiach, Jesus Christ, was at hand. But Daniel sees in the vision. There's coming. There's coming an evil kingdom. And they're going to try to change that decree that Artaxerxes put out. And change the time. And claim that today in our modern times that it was never fulfilled more than 2000, about 2,500 years ago. That it was never fulfilled under Artaxerxes, Cyrus, and Darius. That we have to have a third temple. And so when he goes to think he can change the season and the, and the time or the law or the decree, that's what he's doing. And they shall be what? Given into his hand until a time's time and a half a time. Wow. He's able to pull it off. He's able to actually do it. Because it's given to him. Just like what happened here with the House resolution just recently. That's what's happening. It's being uh, given right to him. The, uh, distinguished Majority Leader, uh, the gentleman from Maryland. Uh, okay. Hoyer, it's being given the to him. Maryland, the, leader, the politicians not just here in America, globally, one step at a time. And they're going to allow them to build that temple. You know, I know Mike from around the world said so they're going to disarm Israel. If they ever disarm Israel, you know it's part of the plot, it's part of the ploy. Because then they will say they have put down their swords and they beat them into plowshares. Well, praise God, they now are fulfilling the prophecy. The law will come out of Jerusalem. No. It's a beast kingdom. It's being ran by the most evil man you could ever imagine. And I'm not talking about Netanyahu. It's whatever's behind him. Whatever's behind him. That's what's really doing it. So we go on and we see 
But the judgment shall sit, his dominion shall be taken away to the consume and to destroy unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. That's because it is the bride, it is the true children of God. And that's both Jews and Gentiles. That'll be all those that wake up and recognize who the Mashiach really was. It was, after all, Jesus. Muslim, Zeke, Jane, Jew, Gentile, it doesn't matter who you are. Those that woke up. So that decree, and by the way, that's what Ezra was writing about over in the book of Ezra, right? He was writing about that. He was the very scribe that wrote that law, right? That's just so beautiful. Artaxerxes, sees king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, the scribe of what? Data. The scribe of the decree of the God of heaven and so forth and now. What was he? He's only, all Ezra was doing was scribing out those things there. Now he does write his own book. He tells about how it all happened. Tells about how Israel, how the priests and everything mingled their seed with a bunch of serpents. Well, he doesn't say serpents in that case there. He just, they corrupted the holy seed because they mingled it with the Nephilim bloodlines, the Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, etc. And that's who got into power when the Pharisees came on board. You understand now what's going on? And I got to show you one other thing. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's over here in Daniel. There's one other thing that you want to see. That's right here in verse 12. And as for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away. Because, you know, people would look at that and they say, well, you know, there's different, there's different kingdoms and stuff. They, they've already come and gone. And I know you're trying to compare that, Steve, to, to the four horses of Revelation. And you were saying that is uh, the British Empire, the United States. And I'm not really sure about the third horse rider and that balances and stuff like that. Is it a combination of all three of them? Maybe. But it's clearly the economic system. I'm not uh, still kind of fuzzy on that part there. But you'd say, well, Daniel here, though, those, those beasts, their dominion was taken away. Watch what it says in purple. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Can you imagine that? Why were their lives prolonged? It's like a cyclical event. Yes, there was, like in the case of uh, Daniel's vision, the king actually represents, oh, Artaxerxes, it represents you. Or was it Cyrus? I get, get, get it mixed up. I apologize. I'm not looking at it right in front of me right now. Right? But it represented you, O oh king. You are that head of gold. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Because God knows that there is that similitude of Britain, the United States, and however the other that third horse rider is, that are all going to come down here at the last days. Wow. I'm excited. Listen, if this type of message blesses you, support the work we do, please. Go to Patreon. You know, join us on patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. We certainly appreciate your support. Also, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Um, you, can, you can donate there. You can donate online on PayPal, or you could just write there by our P.O. Box. Stephen Benoon, P.O. Box, 156 Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. By the way, Dave Hodges, wonderful interview with Dave the other day, also on his broadcast, The Common Sense Show. We got into a lot of interesting things. Got into the Kennedy assassination. Boy, Dave is bad about bringing out stuff out of me. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. God knows what the needs are, and I know that he'll place it in your heart, and we thank you. And pray for my family. Pray for my wife. We are at the toughest time, especially now that my father-in-law's death has been ruled a homicide, and um, we're waiting now to see DAs in two states now this homicide is before them. Let's see what happens. Again, thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon, God bless.